The number one mistake that you can make is judging people for their weird habits without knowing the reasons behind them. Narcissistic abuse victims develop quirks because of the trauma they experienced from narcissistic abuse. These habits might seem odd at first glance, but they often serve as coping mechanisms for dealing with pain, confusion, or anxiety. Understanding these behaviors can help us see the bigger picture and foster compassion instead of judgment. Today we'll explore some of these unique habits, shedding light on the reasons behind them. Are you ready for number one? Rapidly shifting their gaze between people in a group conversation. If you've been affected by narcissistic abuse, you might find yourself quickly shifting your gaze between people in a group conversation. You're scanning every face for signs of approval, or worse, judgment. This habit can develop because you become hyper-aware of the narcissist's mood changes. Dr. Romani Duvasala, a psychologist who specializes in narcissistic relationships, explains that survivors of narcissistic abuse tend to become emotional detectives. They're always on the lookout for signs of approval or disapproval. It's like your brain is trying to figure out who's safe and who's not, even when no one in the room is a threat. Let's talk about number two, biting or licking their lips frequently. Narcissistic abuse victims tend to bite or lick their lips more often than they realize. It's like their body is trying to deal with all the anxiety and stress they've been holding on to. Trauma expert Dr. Bessel van der Kolk, author of The Body Keeps the Score, says that the body often expresses what the mind tries to forget. So, when narcissistic abuse victims bite or lick their lips, it's their body's way of managing all that tension. It's a small, physical way to feel some control, but it can become a habit that sticks around, even after the abuse ends. Take note of this. Try replacing it with a healthier coping mechanism, such as using flavored lip balm to keep your lips moisturized and redirecting anxiety through deep breathing exercises or fidget tools. Let's move on to number three, holding their breath or sighing frequently. If you've gone through narcissistic abuse, you might catch yourself holding your breath or sighing a lot, almost without realizing it. It's like your body is stuck in survival mode, and holding your breath is a way to brace yourself for the next emotional hit. According to Dr. Stephen Porges, who developed the polyvagal theory, our nervous system often reacts to trauma by getting stuck in a state of hypervigilance, where even breathing feels like a threat. The frequent sighs serve as your body's attempt to reset and release all the tension you're unconsciously holding on to. Now, let's continue to number four. Standing or sitting with their arms crossed defensively. Narcissistic abuse victims often stand or sit with their arms crossed a lot, almost like it's second nature. This posture is their body's way of creating a barrier. It makes them feel a bit safer in situations that can feel uncomfortable or threatening. According to body language expert Amy Cuddy, crossing your arms can signal a desire to protect yourself and shows that you might be feeling insecure or closed off. It's like your own little shield against the world. It helps you cope with the anxiety and vulnerability that come from your experiences. So, if you catch yourself doing it, know that it's just a way your body tries to protect you. You shouldn't miss number five, hunching their shoulders. Have you ever noticed someone hunching their shoulders like they're trying to shrink into a human pretzel? That's a common habit for people who have experienced narcissistic abuse. They just want to blend into the wall and not be noticed. This posture often comes from feeling unsafe or undervalued, almost like a turtle retreating into its shell. Dr. Brene Brown talks a lot about how shame can affect our body language, and when you hunch your shoulders, it's like you're trying to hide from the world's judgment. Listen closely. 
practice consciously rolling your shoulders back and engaging in body awareness exercises that promote a more open posture, helping you feel safer and more confident in your space. Are you still up for number six? Shaking their leg uncontrollably while seated. Narcissistic abuse victims tend to shake their legs so much, and it can feel pretty annoying. It's often a sign of pent-up anxiety and nervous energy that they don't know how to release. According to psychologist Dr. Ellen Hendrickson, fidgeting can be a way to cope with stress and is like your body's way of saying, I need to move. It's a low-key dance party for one, but without the catchy music or dance moves. So next time you see someone shaking their leg, just remember. They're not trying to start a percussion band. They're probably just trying to calm their nerves. Let's keep it moving to number seven, rubbing their wrists together absent-mindedly. If you've experienced narcissistic abuse, you might find yourself rubbing your wrists together absent-mindedly. This habit can be a way your body tries to soothe itself. It's your comfort mechanism when you're feeling anxious or on edge. According to therapist Dr. Patrick Carnes, repetitive movements like this can help ground a person when they're feeling overwhelmed. Let me give you a tip. Replace the habit with a calming practice like deep breathing or gently pressing your palms together, which can provide a sense of grounding and reassurance without repetitive motion. Here comes number eight, touching their throat when speaking or feeling vulnerable. If you've been affected by narcissistic abuse, you might find yourself touching your throat when you're speaking or feeling vulnerable. This gesture often signals that you're feeling anxious or uncertain. According to psychologist Dr. Deborah Campbell, the throat is a sensitive area and touching it can be a way to soothe ourselves during stressful moments. It's your body's instinctive way of protecting you, especially when sharing something personal or confronting tough emotions. So if you notice yourself doing this, just know it's a normal reaction to feeling vulnerable and it's okay to seek that little bit of comfort. Moving on to number nine, cutting others off in a conversation. Some narcissistic abuse victims tend to interrupt people in a conversation because their anxiety is on overdrive or they're just eager to share their feelings before the moment slips away. It's like their brain is racing ahead, trying to keep up with their heart. According to therapist Dr. John Gottman, this kind of eagerness can stem from feeling unheard in the past. So, they're just trying to make sure their voice is finally heard loud and clear. Let me teach you something. Practice mindfulness by taking a deep breath and consciously waiting for the other person to finish speaking before responding. It allows you to express yourself fully without the anxiety of being unheard. Finally, we're down to number 10, pushing their hair back or out of their face repeatedly. Have you ever seen someone pushing their hair back or out of their face too often? That's a common habit for people who've been through narcissistic abuse. It's not just a style choice. It often comes from feeling anxious or wanting to regain some control over their surroundings. According to Dr. Amy Cuddy, a social psychologist, adjusting your appearance can be a way to boost confidence when you're feeling vulnerable. So, when you catch someone doing the hair flip a bit too often, just know they're not trying to channel their inner model. They might just be battling their nerves while trying to stay present in a world that feels a little too chaotic. In conclusion, it's clear that the weird habits of people affected by narcissistic abuse are not just random quirks. They're often the result of deep emotional scars Understanding these behaviors helps us empathize with what they've been through. Remember, behind every strange habit is a story of survival and healing. So, instead of judging, let's offer support and kindness. 
If you or someone you know is dealing with the aftermath of narcissistic abuse, know that it's okay to seek help and work towards healing. We all have our paths to walk, and being compassionate towards one another can make that journey a little easier.